ding dong ding ding a dong a ding ding dong ding dong ding a dong ding. Up good Christian folk and listen, a merry church bells ring, and from steeple bid good people come out for the new.
Our processional hymn is Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates, hymn number 15. Please stand. Coming soon. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit or kneel. God spoke these words and said, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Lord, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor your father and your mother. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline your hearts to keep this law. 
you shall not murder. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to this law. You shall not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us and incline our hearts to keep this law. You shall not covet. Lord, Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and to prepare the way for our salvation. Grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient towards the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found a people acceptable in your sight. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. The readings from the Word of God. Thirty-five, beginning with verse one. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands, make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have an anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, with the recompense of God. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. For waters break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals, where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds and rushes. And the highway shall be there, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. It shall belong to those who walk on the way. Even if they are fools, they shall not go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 146, beginning with verse 1. We will read the psalm responsibly by whole verse. I will begin. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth and see and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever. Who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. 
but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. The epistle reading is from James chapter 5, beginning with verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath. But let your yes be yes and your no be no, so that you may not fall under condemnation. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today is from Matthew chapter 11, beginning with verse 2. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now when John heard in prison about the deeds of Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are, are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than than he. From the days of John the Baptist until now, 
the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violence take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to accept it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to their playmates, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. The Gospel of the Lord. In the hand of the Holy Spirit. Amen. John the Baptist is experiencing loss. John the Baptist is experiencing loss because he is in prison. The prophet of the Lord, preparing the way, is in prison alone, confused, angry, disappointed, perplexed. Why was he suffering this loss? Why was he in prison? Wasn't he handpicked to be the messenger of the coming Messiah? John is experiencing loss in prison. And we've all experienced loss in our lives. Loss of a job, loss of a loved one, loss of a dream. You wonder, how could this happen? Because loss feels like death of someone or something. John was having a lot of these feelings in prison. And he has a question for Jesus that made its way to him. And we're going to be looking in Matthew 11 at the answer of Jesus. Because in the answer of Jesus, it contains several things. There's a clarification for John as to the role of the Messiah. But the main thing his answer conveys is that there is hope for us in a time of loss. There's hope for us in a time of loss. Well, what led to John's question for Jesus? What happened to John? Well, we pick up where John is in Matthew verse 2. Now, when John heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? John's had some time to, to think. And what a contrast from John being in prison to John being out in the wilderness with a message to repent the kingdom of heaven is near. Remember the crowds coming out to see John from Jerusalem and Judea? People being baptized for re repentance of their sins in order to prepare for the coming Messiah. 
John must have been thrilled to see in real time the breaking in of God's kingdom. Finally, God is acting, and he is going to do something amazing when he appears. And that anticipation of John and the anticipation of God's people was there in the air. John was there at the very beginning of the public ministry of Jesus. He's the one who baptized Jesus in the Jordan River. He was there when the father said the words, this is my son whom I love. He saw the Holy Spirit come down in power upon Jesus. And maybe it was that whole business of the Holy Spirit coming in power that captivated John's imagination and gave him this idea that the Messiah must be come in power, with fire, with public demonstrations of the fact that he is now in charge. Now God's people will get the leader that they needed. Now God's people will get the Messiah who can make things right with the world, to do something about the ungodly leadership of God's people. Replace those Pharisees and Sadducees that were, you know, tis tisking when they came out to meet with John. They didn't like the message. Perhaps now that the, 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 the Messiah is here, the Romans will be replaced. God's people will no longer be oppressed in their homeland by these pagan, barbarian Romans. The Messiah was coming in power. And that was the expectation of John and, and others as well who awaited the Messiah's appearing. And yet, it says in verse 2, he heard in prison about the deeds of the Christ. What was the Christ doing? Well, last week we looked at Matthew chapter 3. This is chapter 11. So that there's been uh, some space in scripture, but also in, in, in real time. Well, what has happened between chapter 3 and chapter 11? Well, one thing that's happened is Jesus has preached the Sermon on the Mount. This is how God's people are going to live from, verse, from chapters 5 to 7. Also, uh, in the, the message is the fact that that God calls his people to a higher standard of moral behavior as followers of Christ. There's a lot to unpack in, in the Sermon on the Mount, and that was, that was given publicly. But what else has happened? What other deeds have happened in, in the intervening time? There's been the healing of a centurion servant. Jesus has raised a widow's son from the dead. There have been other deeds as well, but these quiet, humble acts were largely, except for the Sermon on the Mount, that was public, but, these, but the healings were, were largely private. They're miracles, Amazing teaching, but not exactly the, the Messiah coming with the Holy Spirit and fire. What a contrast. And what a contrast with John's expectations of what the Messiah was going to be like and what the Messiah was going to do. And I think that's what's arising, uh, what's this this question is addressing is, is a confusion of, of a disconnect between the role, the expected role of the Messiah and the reality of what the Messiah is doing, inaugurating the kingdom of God. And that's why John is asking this question from prison, 
that. He was a part of all of what the Messiah was doing. Now the Messiah is doing these, these quiet acts. And, oh, by the way, he's in prison. So he's no longer acting in this prophetic role anymore. And that's why he's asking this question. Are you the one who is to come or shall we look for another? Is there another Messiah after you? Or are you really the Messiah? I mean, there's, there's a lot there in that question. Because John is suffering loss. Loss of his own role, but also loss of a dream. That this is what the Messiah was supposed to do, and the Messiah is not doing it. What in the world is going on? We're going to look at a moment in what Jesus says in response to John. But what Jesus does in this passage is clarify John's unique role as the prophet preparing God's people for the Messiah, for the Christ. Among those born of women, there has risen no one greater than John the Baptist. And you think of Elijah, Elisha, other prophets in the Old Testament, some very remarkable prophets, right? John is greater. So Jesus is affirming John's role as a prophet. And then he goes on to to say that all of this was prophesied and that John's role is like that of Elijah who is to come. And then Jesus goes on to say that the message of John and the message of Jesus aren't going to be well received. They're going to be it's going to be mocked by people. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. The ridicule. Jesus addresses that. And shows how John is connected with the specific mission, his specific mission to announce and prepare God's people for the Messiah. Well, let's take a moment and look at the answer that Jesus has for John. And what he does in this answer is to clarify why the Messiah has come and what the Messiah has come to do. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. What Jesus is saying to John is that the Messiah is not coming as that fire-bringing, powerful, political liberator you've been expecting. He's not a religious liberator either. But what he has come to do is to reverse sin's curse. That with the coming of God's kingdom... The world that was going astray, that was going away from God, will now be made right with the Messiah's appearing. Not all at once, but we can see even in the early ministry of Jesus, the Messiah's reign and power over sin and death and darkness and loss. The new age of the Messiah has dawned. That's the message that Jesus had for John and for you and for me. The age of the Messiah has begun with the coming of Christ. And one thing that may have impacted John 
was that the poor have good news preached to them. Not monetarily poor, spiritually poor. People who have suffered loss. People who are in prison, like John. People who have nowhere to turn. There's good news preached to them. The Messiah, the Christ, is here. The Christ is able to come into that prison cell or the prison that you're in spiritually. And he is able to say, I am Emmanuel, God with us. I am here for you and with you because I came to earth specifically because of my love for you. That with Christ, with us in the midst of our loss, we can bear that loss. Not that the loss and the pain of the loss is going away, but Jesus in the midst of our loss can give us new life and new hope in our loss. And what that new life and hope looks like is nothing that we can anticipate in the midst of our loss. But we have to allow God to walk us through our loss so that we're in a place that we can see God at work in us out of his great mercy and his grace. Out of loss, which feels like death, comes life. I used to love playing the guitar. I started playing the guitar in my 20s, and I played for years. I played the guitar until it hurt too much because I have a medical condition, arthritis. In particular, I have psoriatic arthritis, which means it's a right, uh, arthritis caused by psoriasis. And it's a weird kind of arthritis in that it affects different joints randomly. Well, I've got a lot of joints, and you have a lot of joints in your hands. And in particular, the joints in your fingers. And as you look at your hands, there, there are a lot of joints. Well, a number of them, not all, but a number of them are inflamed. So much so that what used to be cartilage... Uh, in my fingers, no longer is there. It's gone. Now, fortunately, because of the blessings of, of modern science and medicine, I am on a medication that's essentially taken away the pain of, of psoriatic arthritis. It's the medication that golfer Phil Mickelson takes, Enbro. And it's fantastic. And, it, and it's really, uh, well, without it, I, I really can't imagine what life would be like. But the damage was done to the hands, and it's not coming back. And I, I, I do not have the flexibility in my fingers to, you know, for, for you guitarists out there, you kind of, what do you have to do? Well, you curl your hand around the neck of the guitar, and you've got to push down. And your fingers have to be able to flex, because there's chords and things that you need more than one finger on a string, because there's six in a guitar. So you, get, you push down, so it's two, three. I, I just can't do it. That the, the joints don't work. In fact, my, my hands kind of look like, you know, the Wicked Witch of the West and the Wizard of Oz, you know, they're like this, right? And uh, at the 8 o'clock service, someone went, well, let me, let me see the hands. I said, oh, Father Pete, they're a mess. Well, okay, all right, yes, all right. I, so I, I had to give up playing the guitar, and that was a loss. It was like, it was really like a death to me, something I love to do. I, I could do lo no longer. And so what do you do with a loss a lot of times? Well, you know, a number of you more mature spiritual Christian people deal with it. Well, I didn't deal with it. In fact, I literally put it in the closet, my guitars. I put them away. And during COVID, like a lot of us, I was inside a lot, not going around. And so I found those guitars, and it all came flooding back at me. Oh. I, I wish I could 
play the guitar, but I, I can't. It's a, and then it's this loss, this feeling, oh, this is terrible. It's stupid arthritis. And I said some other things as well uh, along those lines. And it, it occurred to me, yeah, that, that's not coming back, the ability to play the guitar. But what else could I do? Well, my, my fingers are curved anyway, naturally now. Well, what about the piano? What about the piano? And so, I mean, that's one of the positions. Your, the fingers are like that. And I thought, well, we have an old keyboard around, uh, and the kids had it years ago, and I got some batteries for it, plugged it in. And uh, batteries, yeah, uh, got it going. And, uh, and then with so many things today, you just go to the internet and there's, you know, easy piano, the app, right? So you download it uh, for a few bucks and then uh, they, they, uh, they, they draw you in with the name. Like, that was an advertising, so I know how this works. Easy piano. Well, what they should say if they're really on is hard piano because there, there are 88 keys in this thing. They, I mean, these things are huge and it turns out they're very complicated, but I, I kept at it uh, during COVID. I just kept going and going and going. And then I, I asked uh, Charles, our organist, about a, a, a good book for, for adults. And I got this Alfred's Basic Adult Piano Course Level 1 book. And so I began to make my way through it. And, you know, I discovered something. I discovered something in playing the piano or trying to play the piano. You know, Lena and Charles, and Ginger, you don't have to worry about me taking your jobs, right? I mean, that, that's just not going to happen. Like, but I, I discovered something in, in trying to play the piano that I would never have found playing the guitar. How music is structured. How, how, how there are chords, and you have to understand some theory of chords. In the guitar, it was just, here's the piece, learn the piece. And there's a bit of theory, but not very much. But in the piano, even at the elementary stages, you have to understand some things about the shape of chords and why these keys work the way that they do in order to, to position your fingers, my arthritic stupid fingers, in the right place. So they're supposed to go the way they're supposed to go. And then I, I discovered other things about the piano that I never would have discovered if I stuck with the guitar exclusively. Because I, I wouldn't have picked the, the, the piano uh, as an instrument, why would I? I play the guitar. And what God was able to do through learning, even in a rudimentary way, to play the piano was to give me a new love from my loss. Something to hope for. Something to do to preoccupy my mind, to, to understand something of, of the beauty of music itself. And I have to say, I do prefer the sound of a guitar, guitar to a piano. But for me, that's not coming back. But what God has done is given me something to replace it. And in, in a way, I think it's richer. I have a richer appreciation of music through playing the piano. And, well, you know, I, I, I am going to brag. I, I've, I've gone from level one to level two. Which, which my uh, very, very thoughtful wife gave me for my birthday. And so uh, I, I've blown through. What did I blow through? I, it was um, down in the valley. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the bridal chorus from Lohengrin. You know, dun, 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 dun. Uh, now I'm on to Guantanamera. Guantanamera. It is hard. It, 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 I mean, it, see, it, in the guitar, you just play the melody. You know, you usually do the, uh, the accompanying, you know, uh, stuff. And uh, it, it's complicated. It's like, so anyway. So, so that's where I'm at. Level two, there it is. Um, God was able to, to, to redeem the loss. And this actually does have a point. It's there is a tie-in with, with our, our scripture passage for today. That, that sometimes when we're in the midst of loss, uh, we can get preoccupied with the loss 
or just like me with the guitar, just forget all about it. But God wants us to face that loss with him. To face it with him. And he's not going to barge in, do something public. Jesus will come to us in our prison to be with us. Because left to ourselves, loss can lead us back endlessly, reflecting upon the loss, our pain, and our disillusionment. It cuts us off from God and from others, but our, our hope comes from the outside in, from God. The word of God, his promises, and his person penetrate any prison as Christ's presence did when it came to us, when he came to us in a stable in Bethlehem to enter our world, to take upon himself our pain and our suffering, our isolation, our estrangement from God, and asks us, in this season of Advent, to remember what he has done for us in coming to us, to be with us, Emmanuel, God with us. God didn't take away John the Baptist's loss. In fact, as we know the story, John never left that prison. He stayed until the the day that the king, Herod Antipas, pulled him out of his prison cell and chopped his head off in a disgusting, heinous, cruel, and unjust act because of the king's personal whim, and he didn't want to look bad. It's disgusting. John never escaped that prison. But what he heard in prison was the word of the Messiah, that the Messiah is on the move. John has prepared the way for God's people faithfully. He did what God asked him to do. But now the the fullness of God's mission is revealed in Christ, that the Messiah has come to heal those who are brokenhearted to be with those who have suffered loss and to know that in the midst of the loss, there is sting, there is pain. And yet out of that, God is able to transform that pain, that loss through the life that he gives us new life and new hope. Our losses can be borne by knowing that God's life is greater. Jesus came to give us life and hope and that life in abundance. By receiving from Christ, we know his presence. So this day, in whatever you're struggling with this morning, whatever loss, whatever pain, whatever disillusionment, Know the presence of Christ through his blood and his body given to you as a gift that Christ died for you and he bore in his body our sins on the cross because of his great love for you and for me. Know his presence and his forgiveness and his restoration by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you know his hope and his peace that passes all understanding this day. May you have his life and assurance of hope that we all bear in times of loss. Amen. In Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, 
eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please sit or kneel for the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers, inspire continually the universal church with your spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness and so guide and direct their leaders, especially Joe Biden, our president, and Michelle Lujan Grisham, our governor, that your people may enjoy the blessings of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your, to your servants Foley, our Archbishop, Stephen, our Bishop, Pete, our Priest, Bill, our Deacon, and Michael, our Assistant Priest that by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and, right, and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer. For Christ the King, we, we pray for an associate rector, rector to be identified and called for service. We pray for a youth leader and youth leadership team to restart our youth group. And we pray for additional teachers and helpers for kids, King's kids. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prosper, we pray, for all those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for these ministries Christ the King supports. Faith comes by hearing an Albuquerque-based organization that records and provides audio Bibles in over 1,300 languages. And Kairos, a prison ministry, a, a a lay-led interdenominational Christian ministry in which men and women volunteer bring, uh, volunteers bring Christ's love and forgiveness and to prisoners and their families. Guide them, O Lord, and give them boldness to serve thee. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Paula, Dee, Lena, Beverly, Jonathan, Wayne, Bill, Daisy, the family of Nita Turner, and others we now name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear, especially Nita Turner, that you will will for them may be fulfilled, and we ask you to give us peace or give us grace to follow the good examples of all your saints that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, <clears throat> we acknowledge and lament our many sins and offenses which we have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, invoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these our transgressions. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent with the true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning. Welcome to Christ the King. Special welcome for visitors who are here with us today. There are a number of announcements in our bulletin on pages 18 and 19, uh, including our uh, upcoming services, and there's a a list of the times uh, for special services for Christmas Eve, 5 p.m., with a Christmas prelude music starting at 4.45. And Christmas Day, which is two weeks from today, if you can believe it, uh, one service at 9 a.m. We're still uh, collecting the commitment cards for 2023. If you brought one with you today, uh, there are the uh, offertory baskets that you can place uh, your commitment card in. And, of course, we have, if, for your convenience, uh, extra commitment cards out in the narthex for you. Also, the December monthly messenger is ready to be picked up. Uh, This morning, we're going to have uh, prayer teams during communion, and and the the prayer teams will be here, and then you'll be taken uh, for a place uh, to pray, and so please come up during communion. And one thing that we're uh, reinstituting this morning, and we're going to be doing this once a month, is a prayer for birthdays and anniversaries. 
So if there are birthdays, anniversaries, if you'd like to come up with, and Father Michael is going to join me. If you'd like to come on up for December, uh, please do so, and we'd be happy to pray with you. Birthdays, and that's my mom's birthday in December, December 22nd. So mom's not here, and okay. Anniversary. All right, so 34th wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. So let us pray. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that it, and in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Well, God bless you. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
all things come of you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great glory to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father, for in your tender mercy you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made thereby as one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted and in this holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty with these holy gifts the memorial your son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And here we often present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace, and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as the Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us to all and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. Please join me in sitting or kneeling for the prayer of humble access. Together, we do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body and our souls washed through his precious blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for you, the people of God.
The post-communion prayer on page 16. Let us pray. Almighty and living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Our recessional hymn is the Advent of our King, hymn number 23. 